Picture this, a sun-soaked desert oasis where glitz and glamour dance with the mysteries that Las Vegas so effortlessly holds within its neon-lit heart. Now, take yourself back to that moment, perhaps a lazy Sunday afternoon or a late-night TV session. As you scrolled through the channels, a certain TV series from 1978 emerged onto your screen, its name shimmering like a jackpot in your mind, Vegas. Ah, oh, that first encounter. The theme music beckoned you, a catchy melody that could rival the jingle of a casino slot machine. The charismatic private investigator, Dan Tana, portrayed by Robert Urich, strode through the city of excess, solving cases that glittered with both danger and high-stakes intrigue. You leaned in, captivated, as the show unveiled a world where the seedy underbelly of Vegas intertwined with the opulent high life. Maybe it was the chemistry between Tana and his Red Thunderbird that left an indelible mark. Or the way the show captured the essence of 1970s Las Vegas, a place that could be simultaneously glamorous and gritty, hiding secrets beneath its flashy surface. You chuckled at the audacity of it all, the extravagant casinos and the flamboyant characters, each episode a new spin on the roulette wheel of mystery. And now, let's delve into some fascinating tidbits about the show that might have escaped your radar. Did you know that Vegas was created by none other than Michael Mann, the creative genius behind Miami Vice? The same visionary mind who painted neon dreams onto your screens, capturing eras like no other. It's a shared universe of storytelling that you probably never realized existed. So, as we journey back to the land of high rollers and hidden truths, remember that every moment of Vegas was a roll of the dice, a gamble of excitement and entertainment. The show might have ended, but its glitzy legacy continues to sparkle in the annals of television history. Vision history. Vision history. In the glitzy realm of 1970s television, Vegas emerged as a beacon of glamour and intrigue, captivating audiences with its high-stakes drama. Amid the neon-soaked backdrop of Las Vegas, the show's allure extended beyond its riveting plots to include a web of intriguing behind-the-scenes facts. One such nugget revolves around the enigmatic character Lieutenant Nelson, portrayed by Greg Morris. In a pilot episode twist, Nelson was christened George, only to reappear in the series under the moniker David or Dave. This name's shifting intrigue mirrored the show's penchant for unexpected turns. But it was Wayne Newton, the legendary crooner, who left his mark in a particularly remarkable manner. In the episode titled Vegas Classic Connection, Newton assumed the role of Justin Marsh, a racing car enthusiast who shared an uncanny resemblance to none other than Wayne Newton himself. A meta moment that tickled the audience's curiosity. The saga continued in Vegas Dead Ringer, where Newton discarded the facade of a character and embraced his true self, blurring the line between fiction and reality. Yet, at the heart of the series lay Dan Tanner's abode nestled within the opulent confines of the Desert Inn, a lavish residence that served as a testament to the show's commitment to embodying the glitz and the lure of the Las Vegas Strip. In retrospect, Vegas wasn't merely a crime drama, it was a concoction of art and life, woven with threads of imagination and reality. As we reflect on this chapter of television history, the intricacies of character transformations and the merging of identities remain a testament to the era's creative audacity. And so, the legacy of Vegas endures, reminding us that even within the realm of entertainment, the truth can be as compelling as fiction itself. After all, in the world of television, every twist of fate is just another roll of the dice. Muscling up for stardom, Robert Urich's transformation for Vegas in the glitzy world of 1970s television. One named Sean Bright, Robert Urich. As he slipped into the role of the suave private investigator Dan Tanna in the hit 1978 TV series Vegas, Urich's commitment to his character was nothing short of astonishing. Urich's journey into the neon-lit realm of Las Vegas began with a surprising physical transformation. The lanky actor, known for his slender 180-pound frame, embarked on a determined path to pack on muscle. His goal? To embody the rugged allure of a seasoned private eye prowling the flashy strip. The metamorphosis was dramatic. Urich sculpted his body through rigorous training, his weight soaring to a solid, muscular 220 pounds. The transformation wasn't just a feat of brute strength, it was an embodiment of the dedication Urich poured into his role. As Vegas' leading man, he sought not only to capture the essence of the character, but also to redefine his own presence on screen. The ripple effect of Urich's commitment extended beyond his physique. 
It illuminated the depth of his devotion to the craft, a commitment that breathed life into Dan Tana. This commitment was a pillar of his portrayal, making Tana's swagger and charm all the more convincing to the viewers who tuned in every week. As Vegas prepared to dazzle audiences on September 20th, 1978, there was another intriguing footnote to Yurich's journey. Just before the series premiered, Yurich Dan Tana made a memorable appearance at the tail end of Charlie's Angels Season 3, Episode 1, titled Angels in Vegas. This unexpected crossover not only hinted at Tana's expansive connections within the fictional universe, but also whetted the appetite of fans eagerly awaiting his standalone show. In the realm of showbiz, transformations are commonplace, but Robert Urich's metamorphosis for Vegas wasn't merely cosmetic. It was a testament to his dedication to the lengths he was willing to go to transform himself into the iconic Dan Tana. The muscle he gained wasn't just physical, it was an integral part of the allure that drew audiences into the glitzy, high-stakes world of Las Vegas. And so, as the opening credits of Vegas rolled, showcasing Urich in all his muscular glory, viewers were treated not just to a tale of intrigue and glamour, but also to the embodiment of a star's commitment to his craft. In the case of Robert Urich, it was a commitment that took him from a slender 180 pounds to a solid, muscular 220 pounds, etching his name into the annals of television history. Television history. Television has Dan Tana's main gun in the 1978 TV series Vegas wasn't just a prop. It was a distinctive choice that added character to the show's leading figure. The Dan Wesson Model 15.357 with its heavy vented barrel and double action six-shot revolver design became as iconic as the Las Vegas Strip itself. With its sleek lines and authoritative presence, the gun mirrored Tana's own demeanor as a suave private investigator navigating the underbelly of Sin City. This choice wasn't merely an aesthetic one. The revolver echoed Tana's approach to his work, pragmatic, reliable, and ready for any situation. The Model 15.357 seconds reputation for accuracy and power reflected Tana's commitment to getting to the truth, no matter the odds. Whether in the glitzy casinos or the city's shadowy corners, Tana's sidearm became an extension of his personality, a blend of style and substance, just like the show itself. As the series unfolded, viewers saw Tana draw his Dan Wesson time and again, showcasing the symbiotic relationship between the character and his chosen tool. Each time he pulled that trigger, it wasn't just a shot fired. It was a statement of his resolve, echoing the show's motto, if it was easy, anyone could do it. And indeed, Tana's world was far from easy, filled with deceit, danger, and moral ambiguity. The choice of the Dan Wesson Model 15.357 encapsulated this reality, where every step of his investigation was met with the weight of his chosen path. The Dan Wesson revolver became a signature, emblematic of both the character's unwavering determination and the show's commitment to authenticity. It wasn't just a prop, it was a narrative device that underscored Tana's complexity. While the series might have ended, the memory of Tana's iconic gun lives on, a testament to the enduring legacy of Vegas and the enigmatic investigator who carried it through the neon-lit streets of Las Vegas. Aaron Spelling's hit 1978 TV series, Vegas, drew viewers into the glitzy world of private investigation in Las Vegas. The show's enigmatic protagonist, Dan Tana, cruised the neon-lit streets in a 1957 Ford Thunderbird, an iconic choice that mirrored the city's retro glamour. What many may not know is that Tana's character was based on the real-life Las Vegas detective Eddie LaRue. LaRue, who ran a detective agency in the city, served as inspiration for the series until his passing in 2020. Among the vibrant cast, Bart Braverman stands as the sole surviving regular cast member as of 2013. Braverman's portrayal of Binzer, Dan Tanner's trusty valet, added a touch of levity to the show's dramatic narrative. Judy Landers, who played Angie in a recurring role, also lives on, contributing to the fact that these stars remain a connection to the show's past. Vegas exuded the glitz and grit of Sin City, bringing to life the world of high-stakes intrigue. Rooted in the legacy of a real Las Vegas detective, the show remains a testament to the city's mystique and the enduring allure of its vintage charm. 
Vintage charm. Vintage charm. In a serendipitous twist of casting fate, Robert Urich almost missed his chance to portray the iconic Dantana in the 1978 TV series Vegas. Despite Urich's impeccable acting and his stature as one of the tallest and most muscular contenders for the role, producers initially hesitated. They were taken aback by Urich's youthful appearance and demeanor, which seemed incongruous for a character in his 20s. His boyish charm and looks, while an asset, threatened to undermine his credibility as a mature leading man. Ironically, when the series premiered, Robert Urich was 31 years old. However, his youthful visage prompted the creators to contemplate making his character, Dan Tana, a mere 20 years old. A Vietnam veteran, though, the backstory posed a predicament. A 20-year-old veteran seemed implausible. The solution to age Tana to 25, bridging the gap between his appearance and his experiences. This age-related duality extended beyond the screen. Urich's off-screen age exceeded that of several actresses cast as his on-screen girlfriends. Despite portraying a character whose romantic interests were often younger, Urich's real-life years surpassed theirs. This irony added an intriguing layer to the interplay between fiction and reality in Vegas. The intertwining threads of age and appearance wove a compelling narrative in both the show's casting decisions and the portrayal of characters. Robert Urich's journey to become the charismatic Dan Tana was a testament to the delicate balance of appearance, perception, and storytelling in the world of television. In the end, Urich's distinctive blend of ruggedness and youthfulness proved to be the winning formula that brought Dan Tana to life captivating audiences in the bustling world of Las Vegas. So, beneath the glitz and glamour of Vegas, the tale of Robert Urich's casting and character's age offers a glimpse into the complexities of television production, where the art of storytelling sometimes demands a careful dance between reality and fiction and fiction. And as we bid adieu, my fellow seekers of silver screen secrets and aficionados of retro allure, we find ourselves gazing back upon the captivating tapestry woven by the enigmatic 1978 television masterpiece, Vegas. A realm where the neon-lit streets of Las Vegas were more than just a backdrop. They were a character, a witness, a symphony of tales waiting to be spun. As the final curtain draws near, take a moment to let the echoes of private eyes and high-stakes gambles resonate within your psyche. Allow the glint of Dan Tana's unwavering resolve and the mystique of Sin City's clandestine enclaves to merge into the tapestry of your own memories. Was it the suave charisma of Robert Urich that hooked you, or perhaps the allure of a city that never truly sleeps? Whether you found yourself entwined in the complexities of the cases, or merely captivated by the golden aura of the era, Vegas left its indelible mark. Now, dear connoisseurs of nostalgia, it's your turn to shine. Unearth your treasured anecdotes, memories, and ponderings about this gem of television's past. How did Vegas paint its colors onto your story? What scenes still shimmer in the gallery of your mind? Share these cherished fragments, for in doing so, you become a luminary, a keeper of this time-traveling flicker. As our voyage through the neon-soaked nights of Vegas comes to a pause, I extend my deepest gratitude to you, kind wanderer, for embarking on this exploration of celluloid dreams with me. Your time and fascination are gems that enrich this journey beyond measure. So, let the thoughts flow and the reminiscences dance. It's a celebration of the extraordinary tales we've embraced together. With a nod to the past and an eye toward the future, remember, the allure of Vegas endures within you, a gem forever polished by the sands of time. Until our paths cross again, stay captivated, stay curious, and keep the legacy of Vegas alive in your heart. Fondly, your narrator and companion.